Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. So this is I Want to Be the Diverse. This is not the original version of I Want to Be the Diverse. This is the modded version. It has the visuals that are spruced up. If you come in my channel when I uh, run this game, this is the version you usually see. This is a pretty old school but memorable game in the fact that it's got some bosses in it that really stand out for a lot of people. It also is very trap heavy. So bear with me here as we try to get through this with our sanity intact. It's 1 a.m. here. I am very tired, but we're going to do our best to get through this game in an hour or less. The game is broken up into a couple stages that branch off of the main hub. The first one is a Mega Man stage, which is probably one of the more annoying stages in the game. This game is uh, substantially more difficult than the game I was playing earlier today for a variety of reasons. So we're just gonna, like I said, do our best to get through it. Hopefully I will remember all of the one million traps that are scattered around this game. Which I'm not doing. And we will pray that the bosses are nice to us. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the, like, the... Back when I first got into fan games, this was, like, one of the first, like, big fan games I got into. The bosses were always very memorable for me, and I think a lot of people. And you've seen, like, some of the stuff from this game, like, appear in other medleys and stuff. Just because it's one of the iconic old fan games from back in the day. Platforming in this game gets kind of nasty at points, particularly in the later stages where they really turn it up a notch. Come on. All right. So there are some big bosses, and then there are some mini-bosses. Coming up is the first mini-boss. The infamous painter, which we saw in the earlier game today. Hopefully RNG will be good. There's just some attacks you don't want to see during this fight. The light blue one, in particular, is, is not good. Because it can insta-gib. On the second phase of this, I'd like to stay on the bottom because some of the attacks can just destroy you instantly if you're up top. And there's a choke. There's our first choke, boys. So we're already off on the right foot. This is not good either. So once we get past this boss, we'll go into the first real stage of the game. 
And there are... Oh, this is the blue attack, which is oftentimes fatal. Please? Nope. Yeah, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about that. It spins around randomly. But, uh, yeah, probably the stage coming up is one of the more frustrating stages in the game because there are certain segments where it's just... There's really, like, nothing you can do. Like, all the practice in the world will make a difference. The game's being nice to me today. I'll get through quickly. If not, it's going to be agonizing. And we're getting the blue attack. Please. Okay. All right. Good to go. Let's see if we can remember all of the booby traps. So yeah, as a uh, as a beginner fan game player back in the day, this game was uh, quite challenging. But I found the bosses to be pretty fun because, despite how frustrating they can be, they are. Uh, very, very well made and very memorable. Come on. So, hopefully, if you've never seen this game before, you will enjoy it. These red bouncing robot rabbits are the bane of my existence. Not so much here. As for the, uh, the upcoming segments that use them. They take a lot of hits, and in the upcoming segments, they jump randomly. Troll Rabbit. Now we got the top men. Again, there's a a degree of random of randomness to like everything with the movement of these uh, monsters or whatever. Sometimes the AI on them does unpredictable things like that. You thought they were frogs? Eh. I've always just called them rabbits. You could call them frogs, I suppose. From Mega Man, I don't know what they're referred to as. This is one of the most frustrating segments in the run because there is a glitch with these tops where sometimes you shoot them and they don't die. And if they don't die, you die because you cannot dodge them. And it's a fairly common glitch. And it's a fairly... Yep, there it was. And since it's a fairly time-consuming segment, it makes running this game a complete nightmare. Yep. So, a lot, a lot of the... Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of parts in this game that can really just be very frustrating from a speedrunner's point of view. I don't think I would ever recommend anyone play this to speedrun. But, uh, if you've ne- Oh my god. If you've never played it before, it, uh, and you're a, you know, you like fan games, I feel like it's one of those games that maybe everyone should play one time if you're, you know, good enough and have the fortitude to stomach the bosses. But, uh, I mean, they are- they are learn-heavy. Okay. 
That's one of the more annoying segments in this area. Down we go. This is another RNG thing. He throws these tops at a random speed. Sometimes they create combinations where you just can't land. And this room right above me is where nightmares happen. So, pretty much this is completely random. They take a ton of damage to kill. And there's like really like no amount of practice that will save your life here. Please die. Please die. Okay. It's not uncommon to be stuck in that room for several minutes, hoping that the rabbits just don't instantly jump on you and instigate you. And first main boss. Looks simple enough. But all of the main bosses in this game are kind of a big deal. So he's not going to let you off the hook quite that easy. That's sort of the fake boss. Now the real boss. This guy likes to just do random bouncing. His physics make no sense at all. That's one of the two opening wings that we have to go through. So now we go back to the beginning, and instead of taking the right path, we're going to take the left path. And that kind of follows the same format. There will be some platforming, a mini boss, then sort of a real stage, and then another serious boss. with about a bazillion trolls along the way. Let's see if we can do this without dying. I always die down here. Nice. Okay. So this is not the real stage, this is sort of the mini stage. This 
this room, everyone. It's one of those rooms you think about when you think about this game. You don't see this gimmick too often anymore, but in the in the older fan games, you would see it every now and then. Shoot. So you can't touch the spike on you can't touch a spike on either side of the room. If either of the two kids hits a spike, you die. So you just kind of have to memorize where you're going. Oh boy. Of course. Of course. Not the best run I've ever had. Nah, we're trying to keep it clean tonight. This game is going to test my limits, though. People were surprised that I kept it clean during my last game, but that game isn't as stressful as this game. This game is a real scumbag game. This room super tedious. You have to go down the pits over and over again to keep removing the spikes. Although they kind of troll you, making you think that you would have to go down the last pit, but you actually have to go down the same pit two times. The first time I played this game, it took me forever to figure that out back when I was a wee noob at fan games. Some would argue that I still am. Okay. This boss is dumb. All he does is go around the room really fast. And all you can do is hope at the end, when he's going 100 miles an hour, that he doesn't hit you. And he hit me! Of course he hit me! Of course he did. Why wouldn't he? It happens. It happens fairly often when I play this. Because the problem is, is he has an immunity frame that basically won't let you hit him until he goes around the room a couple times on the faster cycles. Please. Oh, yes. So literally everything that can go wrong is going wrong. And my estimate is based on that. So hopefully we'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, you can see how, like, he just goes through the bullets. Please? Oh my god! Just die! Just die! Please, just die! Of all the parts of this game that I dread coming up to this run, this was not one of them. Ah! Oh. Thank you, Jesus. All right. 
This stage is is pretty easy. It's in my opinion disproportionately easy compared to like the rest of the game. It's basically just all springs. If you've ever played Culture, this is the area where we took the uh, the diverse room from. I believe that after this stream is over, right up after me, you'll see Electric doing a Culture run. But yeah, it's... Even, even when I played this game back in the day, I never really found this to be particularly problematic as I die a hundred times on just nothing. My uh, area's got awesome music. Oop. Yeah, sometimes some of these you have to cut kind of close, so. No matter how many times I play this. Oop. I still get screwed up here. Um, I don't know what the tile set is from. I like the tile set a lot, but yeah, I don't know where he got it from. But yeah, it's it's probably like the nicest looking visuals in the game. I've always like enjoyed the look of this area. Okay. I don't know what it's from originally, it's just a custom area. Alright, now this is a big wild card too. Let's go. I didn't save, did I? Let's just not die. This guy has a habit of giving you bad RNG at the end of the fight. It can just totally destroy you. Since the bosses in this game are so long, a death on a boss is very costly. Okay. Now the fun part. We pray to R and Jesus not to kill us. We have to survive two waves of this. The second wave is twice as bad as the first wave. Alright, first wave was pretty good. Yeah, the screen shaking really makes it even that much worse. But this phase is like... It's everything that the last attack was, but like twice as many like obstacles. <sighs> Please. All right. Is there some good news? First time I played is I also didn't know that there was a spike hidden in that question mark. So I had to like try to fight him from the corner. It's, it's a tragic mistake. All right. Now we go to the uh Next stage. Spooky effects. <laughs> yeah. 
even spookier. T-bone from hell. Screen shaking T-bone sometimes causes issues. Alright. And the infamous VVV stage. Probably among all fan games, one of the more infamous VVV stages. It's pretty lengthy and uh, pretty brutal at times. The only thing the VBV stage in this game doesn't have is one of those Vinny Vinny Vici type rooms. But aside from that, it's pretty serious in terms of platforming. a lot of very precise moves in this area. So there will be death. And we'll try not to get mad. Also, like, the physics in this area are a little different. So it's not just like normal fan game physics with the flipping, it just handles a little bit differently. jump coming up. Every time I play this game, I dread this jump in this room right before the save down there. Oh, come on. Of course, I actually have to get to the jump. Yeah. The timing on this is very, very particular. You have to drop straight in the middle, and then right after your guy touches it, hold left. And if you do it just right, you'll get through. Alright, this jump sucks. Yay! Okay. Yeah, all of these games that you're seeing during this marathon are free. Fan games are a cool hobby if you can get into them. I know they look intimidating to watch and like people who uh, 
people who aren't used to seeing this sort of thing can be very put off by it. But they're not all, like, super hard. Like, if you start at the right place, you can find something with, like, your innate skill level to build up your your abilities with. Some people can, you know, start with stuff that's really crazy. And other people, you know, have to kind of ease into it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But people always, you know, think, oh, you guys are... You guys are masochists for playing these sort of things, and it's... It's not really as bad as you think. It, it's, it's, it's rewarding in the sense that, like, this game, for example... When I first got into fan games, this was a game that, you know, it took me, like, probably a couple days of hard playing to beat this game. And, like, at the time, you look at stuff like that, and you think that that's, like, the hardest thing you've ever done, and, like, you'll never do that again, and blah blah blah. And then you get to a point where one day you just, you, you're, like, good. And you're like, man, I used to think this was hard. And... That feeling is, like, so awesome. Because, like, the first time you beat something, you think it's, like, the worst thing ever. But then, like, once you, like, you embrace it, and you practice it, and you learn to understand it, you look back on things like that, and Probably for most of the people running games in this marathon, that's going to be the case. Especially on the, you know, on the last day when you see, you know, like, Camellia. Like, all of those Camellia games at one point were thought to be, like, the hardest games of all time and just crazy. And now we have people who can, like, speedrun them. So, if you're, like, on the fence... You're like, eh, this looks like fun, but I don't know if I could do it. You should, you should try it. Eh, it's not masochism. I mean, you're not gonna like go as fast as we are, but like, just take your time and. You know, play things that are within your skill level, or a little bit above your skill level. And, uh, you know. It'll be doable. If you're persistent, and you don't, like, obsess over, like, how many times did I die? Oh my god, my death count is a thousand. I must suck. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares how many times you die. You know what I mean? It's just about doing it. Just do it. I mean, you gotta realize it when you watch the runs during this marathon. We've been playing these games dozens of times. I've probably beaten this game... 30 or 40 times. You don't have to speedrun, but definitely give it a shot. Alright, this room is really nasty, so I'm gonna kind of try to concentrate here. The save is too hard to get, so I'm gonna. You ha pretty much have to skip it. All right, that's a, a big relief for me. That room is one of the rooms that I really dread when I play this game. It's very easy to just get hit there and then have to redo all of them all, all over again or to risk going for the save. This is the infamous Camellia 2 room, which you'll see on Sunday.
And now for the most infamous boss. Not the final boss, but probably the most well-known boss in the game. Of course. This fight takes a while to learn. Because every attack destroys a part of the room. And you have to like learn how to manipulate the boss to leave parts of the room still standing for you to fight. It's a very painful boss to learn. But it's a very it's a very cool boss to play, like once you know how to do it. is super tricky. Way done. So we're going to wait for the, the vortex of projectiles to swirl past on the right-hand side because it makes it like 10 times easier. Go for the kill shot.
All right. Now we have one more stage left. That sucks your mouse cursor in. We have one more stage left, but two more bosses. And they are doozies. This last stage is a doozy, too. Hopefully we can do it in 20 minutes. Um, I've had a couple good chokes on this run. The painter boss killed me like a whole bunch of times. This segment is like one of the hardest segments in the game. This elevator block and the drop on the other side of this is really terrible. This always takes me several attempts. I've yet to come up with a consistent way to do this. Ah, oh, come on. It's bad enough you have to do the elevator block, because if the elevator block sends you into the ceiling, you're dead. So you have to like jump off while it's going fast, and then you have to do the drop on the other side, which is very, very awful. Alright, that's a relief. So the guy who made this also made a bunch of other fan games, so it's kind of a joke. He pulls you into this like mini stage that's based off of one of his other fan games. very, very booby trap intensive. Please. So it's like you're kind of like in a dream here. <laughs> well, more like a nightmare. Damn it. Again, this all takes... A lot of patience to learn this <sighs> because there's like so many booby traps and they they come at you so fast I got a bad safe spot there but we'll work with it yeah, it's an interesting effect how he like muffles the sound and everything Oh, every time, every time I play this game, I die on this segment multiple times because of just like the traps. They're so fast. Corner jump, please. I think it was the align.
getting there, guys. This segment is awful. It's just super precise traps. Can't do that. Come on. So you have to like single jump up onto that block and a spike comes out of it. Then you have to like kind of get on the other side of it so you can reach the ledge up there. There we go. Alright. At this point, the platforming in the game is pretty much over. Now we just have two bosses to beat. Hopefully, they go smoothly. Bad RNG. The apples were like obstructing my escape. Not a big deal. Yeah, the guy who made this has like a Luigi obsession. Oops, come on. <laughs> Same thing again. There's a lot of Luigi in this game. That's a good apple RNG. Now the tricky part. will destroy the floor. If he destroys the floor, you lose. We got him. All right, final boss coming up. This is kind of a long fight, but it's an interesting fight. Hopefully we just do it and not choke. I like to take a safe strat here. This attack. <laughs> Maybe not that safe. I should have been dead.
Again, the physics on the bouncing here just don't make any sense at all. He likes to bounce around in corners and stuff. G never stops. And time. Alright. We did it. With eight minutes to spare. This game is actually not finished. It never did get finished. It's just sort of sat in limbo forever. But it's such a good game for what it is that it's just always been kind of a classic in the community. Thank you so, so much uh, for watching. And I believe up next we have Electric Gaming. We'll be running a, a game that's near and dear to my heart, Culture. So, uh, yep. I ran it last year, and I, I was probably one of the worst people to run it because everybody's better at it than I am. So uh, give it up for Electric. We'll be up here in a couple minutes. And I will see you guys later. All right. Thanks, Bear. Okay, guys, so I'm going to...